Hello guys and welcome back to yet another YouTube video. If you're watching this close to New Year's, uh, I want to wish you the best for 2025 and I sincerely hope you cross all of your business goals. The response on my last video has been truly amazing. A lot of people contacted me on my socials. Some people left comments on the video and just overall the views were great, which shows there's a lot of interest. Um, if you haven't seen the last video, uh, I went over how I personally used uh, automated sales systems to get my first clients and grow my business from zero to 20K a month. I am personally in the business of implementing sales systems just as the ones I used for other businesses, other B2B businesses to be more specific. So if you're interested in having a done for you solution and want to outsource your sales process to rapidly scale your business like never before, click the link in the description to book a discovery call and to see if we're a great fit. Otherwise, you can just watch this video and wait for future ones because I'll be explaining in detail how you can copy these sales systems for yourself to grow your business. As I just said, the response on the last video was amazing. There has been definitely a lot of interest from you guys, from the community, when it comes to learning how to set up these automated sales systems. In this video, I'll be very practical. I'll explain quite directly how you can get almost unlimited highly targeted lead lists. For that, you'll need three things, uh, and I'll be going over them more specifically later on. But first, let me name them for you. First of all, you need N8N, which is the automation software I use in all of my videos. I personally think it is the best automation software out there. I highly recommend it. This is not a spon I'm not sponsored at all. This is not an affiliate link. I just think it's the best and I want you guys to get started with the best. Secondly, to get the leads from somewhere, you need a database. For that database, we use Apollo or we will be using Apollo. Apollo can best be summarized as a giant LinkedIn profile database. I honestly think most business profiles available on LinkedIn are also available on Apollo and it allows you to search and filter for the ideal target you want to send emails or to or call. And then lastly, we will need to extract these profiles or these leads from Apollo. For that, we'll need a scraper. Apify is like an online marketplace, which provides a lot of scrapers, uh, which also provides a scraper that I use, which is literally called Apollo Lead Scraper. Using a scraper will save you a lot of manual work down the line, and it will perfectly work with the automation you can see on screen already. If you're familiar with N8N, you can see that I've already done a test run. I have done this test run so I can quickly go over the automation for you guys to explain how it works before diving into the other software, which I just talked about, which was Apify and Apollo. So let's quickly go over the workflow and then get on to the juicier stuff. So since we'll be using an API, we need HTTP request nodes. And in this case, we'll be needing two, one to fire the API and one to retrieve the data from the API. So the first one is a post because we want to get it started. You'll need to copy this URL. If this is also in the Apify documentation. So don't worry, you don't have to write it down manually. You can just look up the Apify documentation online. This part of the URL, is the ID of the scraper. So if you use a different scraper or just if you wanna use a different Apify scraper at all, this will be a variable. And then you'll need to fill in the headers. The headers is just the authorization, kind of like the permission you have to use the app in Apify. Here will usually be your API key, but for the purpose of this video, I've removed my API key because it's the personal one I use. Just so you know, this is where you fill in the API key. And then lastly, you'll have some JSON code. This might look a bit frightening, but please don't worry. This is straight up copied from the Epify. Um, I'll show you the Epify page later on in this video. This is really nothing to worry about. The only important thing to take from this is the search URL. Um, the search URL is what you get from filtering inside of Apollo. So this yet again is also not something to worry about. Um, if we're in Apollo, I'll show you how to filter and search for your ideal leads based on whatever you're looking for. And then you can just literally copy the URL, paste it here to get scraping on the lead list you want. So a thing to note 
is that to, the Apify scraper can take quite a while, depending on how big your Apollo list is. So let's say you have found 10,000 people inside of Apollo, which you want to email or phone. So you want to extract those 10,000 profiles. This API scraper, or this scraper, excuse me, might take up to 10, 15 minutes. So you can set a timer, so you can set a wait note, for example, but that's never really, that never really works because you don't now know how long exactly it's going to take. So this is a manual part, mostly. I just watched inside of Epify where you can see the run, where you can see if it's completed, if it's still running, or if there are any errors before I manually press a run node on the get request. I know I'm always talking about automations, but, but to keep this as simple as possible, I think this is just a manual step. You press on this one, open Apify, check after 10, 15 minutes, get a drink yourself, come back, see if it's completed, then click on this one to get all the results. In this case, it was a very quick one. I only got 50 results. As you can see on the output side, the right side, it outputs the information. Before I forget, yet again, you'll also need a URL. As you can see in highlighted in green, this is a variable. It's the data set ID. The data set ID is uh, new every time you do a run because it's specific to the run you did. So it needs to be a variable, just so you know if you guys get mixed up. And on the right side, you can see all the output. So uh, I was specifically looking for founders and co-founders, so Felix Rosen. I don't want to get any privacy issues here, but you know what I mean. The co-founder, his email address, organization ID, whatever, where he's from, so on, so on. As you can see, there is a ton of information you can extract, which is also, it brings me on to my next point. It's way too much information. It's, you don't need anything, everything for a CRM or later down the line. That's why we use this edit fields node. In this edit fields node, as you can see, as I've organized it quite neatly, you give titles to the things you want. So I want their first name, I want their full name, their LinkedIn URL, so I can later down the line enrich it. I want their title, stuff like that, so I know who I'm talking to. I've also included their location. Uh, and uh, employment history zero is their most recent employment history. Um, so that's all, that's all almost always the thing they're doing now or the business they're working for now. In this case, I'm targeting founders. So this is also almost directly also the founding date of the company, which might be interesting for you to know. That's why I've included it. As you can see on the left is everything we extracted from Apollo using the scraper. It's way too much, but you can just filter this by let me give you guys an example so let's say you want the linkedin url just like me you just drag it from the left paste it here and that's done so you do this for each individual thing you want to extract out of the data then it goes through a well it's not new anymore it's like a two month old node which and it then introduced which remove du removes duplicates as it says down here this is really straightforward it has a memory from previous runs. And of course you want to keep your CRM as neat as possible. So let's say you do 10 runs and sometimes you get duplicate leads. This one will make sure only the ones who haven't been through here are kept and the other ones will be discarded. So they won't be added to your CRM, which is the final step. It just keeps your CRM clean. And you also don't want to be emailing the same person with the same offer multiple times because they'll just mark it as spam and it will hurt your deliverability uh, and just the quality of your email account in the long run. And then lastly, I use Airtable CRM. I think for me, it's the, the best option. Uh, it's very easy to work with in these and, and automations, but you can use whatever CRM you are already using or you prefer to use in the future. The only thing it needs is an API, which I'm sure most have. So as promised, this workflow was short and sweet. You can copy it quickly and easily for yourself and just fill in the things like the personal information you need. Now we'll quickly dive into Apify and I'll show you which scraper I used, how you can copy the JSON, what you need to fill in and that's and where you can find the rest of the documentation. 
So here in Apify, I use the Apollo.io lead scraper by Curious Coder. It's $45 a month. The thing is you can get a trial for, I think three days to kind of set it up for yourself, test it out if it's something you like. For the attentive viewer, these, this what's here in the cookies is the same thing you saw in the JSON code. So you just copy and paste this. This is where you paste the search URL. Well, it's very obvious we want emails because we want to contact the people we have scraped. Uh, we also want to wait for email verification. There is the option within Apollo to only extract profiles which with verified emails, which you'll definitely want to tick because otherwise your emails just bounce or they'll go nowhere, which once again will, he will hurt your deliverability. I always do a thousand records maximum. There's no real reason why I go for a thousand maximum. You can do this to whatever you want. You can also leave it empty to scrape all the leads you found. I just think doing a thousand at a time is enough. It also takes like 10, 15 minutes. And if there's an error, you can fix it. And then lastly for a proxy, which is necessary and it's also free. So if you're using this one, I would definitely set it up. I always use residential and just use anywhere you can use. This is because Let's say you're not using a proxy and you're always doing it from the same IP address. Apollo might flag your account because you're kind of doing something which is not against the rules, but it's a bit of a gray area. They want you to extract the leads manually and are not really in favor of using a scraper. Otherwise they would have made it easier for you. So once you filled all this in and once you filled in the URL, which once again, you get after filtering in Apollo, you just click on JSON. Copy all, paste this into the N8N workflow, more specifically the HTTP post node under the code, which is all the way at the bottom, and you're good to go. Now that Apify is clear to everyone, let's go over to Apollo, which in my opinion is the most interesting part of this video. So firstly, I'll quickly show you the pricing because I, for people that are getting started, it's of course a very important thing. Same as the Apollo scraper, there is also a trial version of Apollo, which is free. It gives you 1200 credits a year, which means you can extract 1200 leads, which is more than enough to get started. But after you've used those 1200 credits, you can go over to the basic plan, which is just $49 a month. The basic plan allows you to scrape or extract 6,000 profiles, which is way more than you'll need to get your first clients or way more than you'll, than you'll need to actually scale your business. So it is really affordable. That's one thing I like because it's not, it's affordable, but it's also amazing. Now that we've covered the boring stuff, like the pricing, let's get into Apollo itself. So as I mentioned, Apollo is just a giant database of most, if not all of the business LinkedIn, LinkedIn business profiles. As you can see up here, there are over 200 million results. Of course, not all 200 million results are interesting for you. And instead of emailing everyone, you want to be more specific and we want to be more specifically targeting decision makers because decision makers are at the end of the day, the people who are actually entitled to do business with you. And they're the ones who will be signing off on any of your invoices. So to do that, you can filter job titles. I always do like CEO and founder. As you can now see, this includes everyone who has co-founder and CEO or founder and CEO in their title. So you're more than sure that you'll be talking to decision makers. Then for email status, that's very straightforward. You just want likely to engage and verify it. Because as I said before, you only want to send emails to people of, or to email addresses, which are verified. There's other software you can use, which I'll go over in future videos, but just also tick it in Apollo, please do this for me. Otherwise it'll bounce, it'll hurt your deliverability. Uh, and most of your emails will be sent to spam directly instead of to their inbox, which is just a waste of your time. Then for location, this is really depending on if you want to do global business, if you want to do business in the EU, if you want to do business in the US. One thing that I did notice is that it looks at a person's, loca a person's location, not that their age business location. So sometimes if you target US, there are some Indian companies or whatever, uh, which do very little business over there, or maybe don't even really speak or don't communicate using English as their first language. 
Then employees is one of the more important ones. I usually go for 11 to 20 and 21 to 50, because if you go for the one to 10, you're talking to very small businesses. And for me, as someone who wants to scale businesses, that can be interesting so also maybe for you, but you have to bear in mind that these people or these businesses also have a lot less to spend. And from my experience, the people who have more to spend are the best clients, are the clients you'll, you'll want and you'll need because they always also have a lot less to complain and they'll be a lot happier as long as you do the job. So I always select 11 to 20 and 21 to 50. Since I haven't selected the location and this is still world, worldwide, there are 380,000 leads we can still contact. And then for interest, industry and keywords, it depends. It depends on what your product is. So let's say you are in sales like I am, or that you're like in lead generation as I am, to be more specific. You could think of marketing businesses. So people who do e-commerce marketing for B2C businesses. They're always looking for more clients because that's what their entire business model depends on. So you can target them, offer them that you'll take on the, the entire outbound process and just get them ready to buy highly interested leads for a fee, fixed fee a month. And you can do this for everything. I mean, you can do this for accounting, for B2B accounting businesses. The list is endless. And as I said, it's really dependent or on what kind of offer of what kind of services you as your and your business provide. And then lastly, revenue, revenue is a lot less specific. So um, if you press on is known, only you have like a third of the companies, the revenue is known. So what I've seen a lot of other people or what I've seen some other people do is say like they want a minimum of like 5 million. So the revenue of the company was 5 million in a year. But the, the only thing you forget is that like, there might be a lot more companies which revenue was 5 million or more a year, but since it isn't known, you'll be excluding them automatically. So I leave this open, but for a more specific search, let's say you're only interested in very high revenue targets because you sell a very expensive product or service, you can definitely use it. That's why I wanted to highlight once all the filters are, fill, are filled out, as I said before, you just go over to the URL up top, which you can see it's just above my screen recording. You copy and paste that URL into the NITN post note all the way at the bottom, as I showed earlier in this video. You can press start and you're ready to go. After just a few short minutes, you will have your CRM filled with thousands of leads, which you can enrich. In future videos, I'll be going over how you can use AI to enrich these leads, which not only makes it 10 times more efficient, but also makes it a lot better than humans do because AI doesn't forget. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. If you've watched to the end, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.